Some years ago, the Bay of Nuadibu on the coast of Mauritania was one of the largest graveyards of fishing vessels in the world. More than a hundred wrecks of all sizes were breaking up in the wild Atlantic seas. The coastal waters off Mauritania are amongst the richest fishing grounds on the planet. Fishing vessels from around the world come to this place. Unscrupulous ship owners sent vessels near the end of their life here to be abandoned at the end of the season, and then they did not have to pay for their destruction. Abdallahi Mahadu knew the graveyard at its height and now looks after the last carcasses. Beforehand, there were a hundred or so wrecks scattered around. From Portugal, Korea, Asia, Russia, other places. Four years back, the coastline began to be cleaned up, and what you can see today is what's left after the first 50 ships have been pulled to land to be cut up. Most of the dismantling was financed by the European Union. It is managed by the Dutch company Mammoth. At the controls of his tugboat, Captain Hadamin Sabea brings the wrecks to the coast where they are cut up. We have a lot of wrecks to tow, a good 100 or so. The fact that there are a lot less boats washed up here now makes the task much easier. Maneuvering is a lot easier. Removing the wrecks has allowed the canoes of the local fishing fleet to once more spread their nets along the coast. There remain now only a dozen ships, which soon will be sent to be cut up. This was a Chinese ship which fished for a long time and stopped these last few years. It's written in Chinese here. It's waiting to be cut up. You can see that this ship was part of the Chinese fleet. That's its flag. There was a lot of cooperation between China and Mauritania, and the Chinese fished our rich fishing grounds. I spent five years of my life on this ship as a sailor. You only had to put the net in the water for two or three hours, and it brought up 12 or 13 tons of fish. Once aboard, they were preserved in these metal crates. This kind of net is forbidden now. The mesh is too fine, and little fish can't escape. Here we're at the bridge, where the captain commanded the ship. Now, this is where I live. My kitchen, dining room. This is where I sleep. That was the captain's chair for piloting. Now it's my life.
I spent a great deal of my life on these ships as a sailor and now as a caretaker. It makes my heart ache when these ships are cut up. It's shocking and it touches me deeply, but that's life, there's no choice. I hope I find another place to live. Over 70 years old and aboard the fragile raft he built himself, Abdeli inspects the wrecks once a week, even the furthest away, to detect the currents which send the carcasses to the bottom. The cutters, as Abtali calls them, turned up at his place in the early morning without warning. The old man has to put up with the workers as they cut his rusting palace to pieces. He's got five months, and then he must go. The wrecks pose a number of ecological problems. These old ships have been abandoned as they were, and still contain a number of pollutants, especially PCBs, liquids used in electrical systems, which are toxic and have a very long life. On a boat, there are different kinds of metal, like copper, iron and zinc. At the moment, prices for metal by kilo are four euros a kilo for copper, two euros a kilo for zinc, and from three to 50 cents for steel. Soon there will be no more wrecks floating in Nouadhibou Bay. To salvage valuable metal, Mohamed Traoré has to fall back on those that have already sunk. I've been a diver for five years, and I look for all kinds of metal, especially the most valuable, like copper. But if there's none, I take iron. When I dive, I can see a large ecosystem in the wrecks. There's a multitude of fish, lots of different kinds, octopus, and from time to time, hogfish, sardines, and turtles, amongst others. From my first dive of the day, I generally find lots of fish resting in the wrecks. Sometimes, Mohamed Traoré doesn't bring back any scrap, but he doesn't give up, diving again and again, using equipment which has the sole advantage of stopping him from cutting himself on sharp, rusted metal. I would like the wrecks to stay in place because that's how I survive. My dream is that every day, one or two wrecks wash up on the coast so I can carry on living like this, like the fish. When all the wrecks in the bay have been broken up, there'll be no lack of others to arrive. Many sea routes go past Cape Blanc, a few kilometers from Nouadhibou. This cape is well known for its violent currents and terrible weather. Many vessels have had problems in this dangerous area. Rusty skeletons build up there, awaiting the coming of the scrap merchants. Mohamed Belgier is the lighthouse keeper. He knows the stories of all the wrecks on this windy coast, which is home to thousands of seagulls.
This boat was wrecked here in 2011. In just six months, it was cut up by the scrap merchants. Just the hull is left. It's too deeply buried in the sand. 4,000 tons of scrap were cut up with basic equipment under the menace of a brutal ocean. Small canoes and ships often wash up here because of the currents. They're very strong, and if the fishing boat captain doesn't know how to navigate in these waters, they get wrecked here on Cape Blanc, especially at night. All around the world, wrecks are caused by violent weather. In Kazakhstan, the strangest ship graveyard has formed in the middle of the desert, thanks to the extreme climate. Around the ships, there is sand, nothing but sand. Once there was a sea, the Aral Sea. In the heart of Central Asia, it was one of the world's great inland seas. Intensive cotton farming in the countries around it changed the course of the rivers feeding the sea. Since the 1960s, some coastlines have moved back 100 kilometers from their original locations. The port of Aralsk in the northern part of the Aral Sea once flourished. On the old seafront, a few abandoned ships serve today as museum pieces that recall what the town once was not so long ago. Today, the site is surrounded by dust and sand. Selim, a child of the 1980s, was a direct witness of the spectacular desertification that struck the region. He had to abandon his job as a sailor and become a tourist guide. The catastrophic retreat of the sea has become the main theme of his job as a guide. Attracted by the splendor of these ships, which seem to have fallen from the sky, many tourists make the trip to be photographed on these wrecks. The tourists, they really like to see, and they come only to see the sheep graveyard, these old sheep wrecks. It's hard to imagine that these hulls loaded and unloaded goods, and even harder to believe that they fished here where there is just a wasteland. Around Aralsk in the early 60s, there were about 100 bo fishing boats like this. As the sea fell, the waters became more and more salty and the fish died in masses. Before finding themselves washed up on the sand, the fishermen found few fish. This room used to be a captain's room, and here you see you still can the chain, which is used for wheels. And from here you could ride the boat. This is the anchor of the ship that you can see behind me. 
And uh, I can imagine that uh, here the depth of the sea was about 17 meters because the length of the anchor chain is about 51 meters. So usually the chain is used three times longer than the depth of the sea where the usually ship is parked. The largest wreck is that of a small cargo ship. In summer, the heat here is crushing. In the worst hours of the day, wild horses take shelter in the shadow of the wreck, watched only by the eyes of the ghosts of the crew. This boat is uh, special because it's one of the examples of the complete ship because it's uh, very remote from the city so people don't come to cut it. Nowadays uh, most of the ships are cut into small pieces and taken away by the locals just to sell it as a scrap metal. If he doesn't reorganize his job as a guide, Selim will have to find another trade. Soon the wrecks will only be a memory, and no one will remember that instead of the grey and desolate steppe, there was once a sea that gave life to the region. <laughs> 